Morning. <laughs> Hey everybody, this is Perch, and uh, creators rights in movies, so this isn't a viewer mail, but there's been some conversation, uh, Exalted Speed over on Twitter, good Twitter account, you should follow it, lots of good stuff comes out of there, uh, attempts to at least get to the, you know, the, the answers of some of the things in comics, even if we don't like the questions, uh, but the, the this question of creators' rights came up in regards to movies, and so somehow the conversation, there's an argument that got going on between uh, you know, the, the, somehow Jim Shooter and homophobia got thrown into the mix. I, I, I always say this is probably the least favorite thing I have about Twitter and YouTube and a lot of social media comments is people want to grind the acts that they want to grind. So even if the topic is like, hmm, which is better, apples or oranges, you'll get some jackass who will come in there going, you know, you know, farmed fishing is bad for the environment and humanity. It's like, okay, that, that has nothing to do with apples and oranges, but it's like, but that has to do with food. You can't ignore food, you bigot. And it's like, uh, what, what is even going on here? That's, that's an example of Twitter. Um, but the, this, this argument, kind of the initial crux of it was, you know, what kind of rights do creators have in, in movies? And um, there, you know, the basic kind of analysis came down that in many ways, the MCU, Marvel, Kevin Feige, et cetera, this really has nothing to do with Kevin Feige, more to do with just Disney and their practice as a whole. Because you see the same thing with Kathleen Kennedy's uh, stuff. You see the same stu- thing largely with DC's movies. They do it a little bit differently in, at Warner. Uh, but there's an, there's an effort to, in many ways, deprioritize the creator who did the comics that the movies are adapting. Now, you might say to yourself, hang on, they, uh, they usually put the credits of the people who worked on the comic somewhere in the movie, and you're correct, they do. Usually about eight minutes into the credit scroll after the soundtrack, but before we get into the uh, you know, legal requirements of you know, the filming that went on in Georgia, they will have a little paragraph that kind of scrolls up the screen that features a bunch of comic creator names. And uh, comic creators will sometimes take screen captures of that and share it on social media and be proud that they were in the movie, you know, listed there in the movie. And, and they should be. Nothing against that. But the, it really is the least you can do. It is uh, that that kind of creator credit is basically a check mark to say, yeah, some people are bitching about this. We're going to put this in the uh, the most, you know, the most hidden possible place to still have it in the movie, but give it zero prominence. Now, why would they do that? Are they just anti-creator? Well, it, maybe, but it's, it's actually a little bit more complicated than that. You know, including other creators, including other names in products like this is pretty much nothing but a liability in the eyes of the theaters and in, in the eyes of the, sorry, not the theaters, in the eyes of the movie producers. You know, if you've got 60 odd creators that you need to credit who contributed to The Punisher during his story, um, what are the odds that one of those 60 is going to, oh, I don't know, one day up and you know, murder their wife or be found guilty of being a rapist or, you know, who knows what kind of craziness is going to happen with those people. And then you might say, yeah, there's a lot of people in that movie that get listed there. But, but Hollywood, when you prominently credit and feature somebody, they're putting an investment into your name. It's a big difference between, you know, when they say produced by James Cameron and then they list the 500 or so odd people that did the visual effects for Avatar. It's, there's, a, there's a major difference between how those two are credited. And they're going to care a lot about the name that has prominence. They're going to actually, you know, the studio's going to need to defend itself if, say, James Cameron turns out to be a raving lunatic. Whereas if he's just stuffed into the credits with a bunch of other names kind of randomly going by, you see him on the screen for all about five, six seconds before they disappear, it's not as big a deal. And a lot of the comic creators that go into these stories that are then adapted for the movies, nobody knows, you know, I, I mean, nobody knows what they're going to do. And, you know, quite bluntly, nobody really cares, certainly from the movie production view, who these people are. They're doing it because they feel like a moral obligation to put some name in there because they got, you know, attacked for not crediting the creators. But they don't want to actually put anything very prominent you know, on the movie, they don't want to they put that name out there too much, or it can cause a problem for them. So that's kind of how they sit with it. 
it's not about greater rights. It's about kind of covering your ass and doing so in the, uh, you know, the way that's going to give them the most coverage possible. They need coverage for covering their ass. That's kind of, kind of how that sits. Now, you might say for a second, and this was where some of the conversation went, what about Stan Lee? You often see Stan Lee presents, Stan Lee doing a voiceover, Stan Lee, uh, you know, gets cameos in the movie as actual characters. There's a lot going on with Stan Lee. Well, the reality there is, and this is going to be weird for, you know, comic fans, longtime comic buyers to understand, is that the Stan Lee that they're crediting in that movie and that they're, you know, has a cameo or you may hear the hello, true believers kind of stuff before the movie begins or the cartoon begins. That Stan Lee is a marketing product. That is not a Stan Lee, the creator. It's Stan Lee, the, you know, marketing prop that basically the studio uses to get you in the mind of, hey, this has credibility of being a comic book product. That's all that is. There is not a desire to do right by Stan Lee, the creator. There's a desire to use Stan Lee, the, you know, the product to help sell another product. And it's kind of weird to talk about somebody, you know, who's passed away in this fashion, but that's, that's what it is. Disney has sort of attempted to do the same thing with Jack Kirby, as they've called like Kirby, one of our original comic Imagineers. All right, fine. You can call him that. Um, he wasn't, but it's way different than citing Kirby, the creator. They're not going to go into kind of, here's Kirby, the man who looked like this and dressed like this. And then, you know, walked into the office and slaved away at a desk. Instead, they need to create the mythology around Kirby, where it's Kirby, the human being who Kirby, the, the bigger than life human legend who, you know, would uh, kind of it's, it's, it's a very different thing. That is basically going on when they cite Stan Lee or Jack Kirby or creators like that. It is it is not about rights. It's not about doing, quote unquote, the right thing by the creators. It's it's about can I use this person as a product? So, you know, Stan Lee, if it ever truly came out, you know, we've seen a bunch of people do hit pieces on Stan Lee around various activities and, you know, everybody's got a bitch about someone. Uh, but none of them really stick because the Stan Lee that is known and, and kind of portrayed in movies is just, it's, it's like, it's a caricature. It's a cartoon. It's, it's, you know, the equivalent of the, the Siri voice on a phone. It's not really about a person anymore. It's about a product. Uh, but that, that's, that's kind of how all this stuff shapes out. I mean, at the end of the day, and this is a personal preference, uh, different creators have different views on it. Uh, if I was a comic artist or a comic writer, I would not care about being credited in a movie. I'd care about if I was getting a check because one of my ideas was used there. But in terms of getting my name somewhere in the credits, that wouldn't doesn't do much for me. But for some people, it's a big deal, and you know, more power to them if that's uh, if that's what that's what gets you off. Then cool, um, that's that sounds fine. But in general, just understand that that when it comes to the movies. Feige, Kathleen Kennedy, Disney, you know, even James Gunn, you know, D Warner Media, all these 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 giant corporations, their role, their their point is to put out a movie, a product, and try and you know use whatever tools at their disposal they can in order to sell that product. And you know, things like creator fairness and that kind of stuff really do not come into the equation at all at any point. It's not to say they're bad people. It's that to say their their purpose is is cash. That is why that is why they exist. That is what they're doing. And it, you know to give them higher moral relevance than that, I think it's just being silly. Uh, you know, you, you it, it's nothing really against them. I, I think in their role, I don't know that they should be more than that. I don't want you know Kevin Feige or Kathleen Kennedy to be torchbearers for what is right morally for creators. That's, that's not what I want them to do. That's not how I view what they need to be. Uh, they, their, their job is to make, make things for a profit. And when you keep life uh, relatively simple like that, it's, uh, it's usually better off. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Like and subscribe, of course, and thanks for listening.